Hello, welcome fellow traders. AMP Futures here presenting another how to video. In today's how to, we're going to go ahead and show you how to apply an OCO bracket order to a naked position. So, essentially, what that means is let's say you get into a position, but you forgot to attach a protective stop loss and attach also a profit target to get you out of that position. So, what we're going to show you is how to apply a protective stop loss and a profit target to a position that does not have an OCO bracket order link. There's two ways of doing it. You can do it directly off the chart, and you can also do it from modifying the order from the trade panel from your positions menu. So let's go ahead and demonstrate exactly how to do that. So first things first, right now we're looking at the micro E-mini S&P 500. This is an exchange traded futures contract on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, very popular contract among our customer base here at AMP Futures. I'm gonna go ahead and get into a quick position here just by establishing a long position. So I'm just gonna buy at the market price. There's no protective stop, there's no profit target. All right, so now looks like we got filled at 5267. Let's open up our trade panel and just verify that. You can see here at the bottom net position, we're long one micro e mini S&P 500 at 5267. And notice there's no take profit, there's no stop loss. So essentially this is what we call a naked position. We have no protective stop and we have no profit target. So there's a couple ways that we can apply the OCO bracket order. One thing that I find that's very unique with trading view charting is you could do it right on the chart. And then I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So right now, if you notice, the chart is actually displaying the open position. You can see it right there, currently losing $1.25 on the trade. You can see there's a blue one, which means that we're long one. And on the right side price axis, you can see where it says 52.67. That's just letting us know that we're long from that price. So again, let's double check it, 52.67, right? So it all matches up. You can see there, there's a long position and there's the last trade price. All right, so now when you hover your mouse cursor over the open position display on the chart, you'll notice TP and SL will appear to the left. That's take profit and stop loss. Now what I can do is I can hover my mouse cursor over the TP and you can notice the mouse cursor turns into a little hand icon and now it actually says drag to add take profit. So we're gonna do exactly that. Remember we're long, so our take profit is gonna be a sell limit above our entry price. So we're gonna take this take profit, hold it, hold it down with our left click. Now we're gonna drag it up and we're gonna release it once we wanna basically apply the take profit at a specific price level. So 52.67, I'll just keep it at 52.70 even. All right, now we're there, we're gonna release the left click. All right, now if you notice, if we go to our positions tab here, notice now our take profit is at 52.70, it's now in place, but we still don't have a stop loss. So we're gonna do the same exact thing with the stop loss. We're gonna hover over SL, as you can see there. Now we're gonna left click and drag down. And let's just say we want to have our stop loss at 52.64 even. Release it. And now you can see the stop loss at 52.64. All right, so that's how you apply an OCO bracket after the fact, post entry, when you get into the position, which allows you to cover your position, meaning cover your position, whether you're going to get either stopped out with a protective stop loss, or hopefully you'll be able to take a profit on your trade and get and, and, get, and exit your trade on a profit target. All right, so that's how you do it directly off the chart. Now let me cancel out the take profit and the stop loss. So now again, we have a naked position. We have a long position at 52.67. Notice the take profit and stop loss is no longer there. So now here's the other way of doing it. If you open up the trade panel, sometimes your trade panel might be minimized. You gotta click here at the bottom where it says AMP demo. Of course, if you're trading live, it'll say AMP live, right? You wanna go into your positions tab. Now notice if you're under the individual positions, it will not give you the ability to modify the position. You have to click on net positions here. Now to the right, you'll see this little modify button here, also known as protect position. So if I click it, this brings up this little order ticket view, and now I can check off take profit and stop loss. And there are four ways to set the parameters for the take profit and stop loss. You can either do it based on ticks, specific price, you dollar value, or percentage. I find it easiest just to use the tick value, but this is one thing that you have to understand is very important. If you're Applying an OCO bracket order post entry, meaning you have a naked position and you're going to apply an OCO bracket order after the fact that you got into the position, you need to be very mindful of where the market's currently trading at if you're going to use the tick value option. Because a tick value option, in fact, let's let's actually, I'm actually curious, I'm not sure if it actually goes based off the last trade price or the entry price. So I'm actually curious what it actually does. So what I'm going to do real quick, this is a live experiment as we're doing this. I'm going to set eight ticks and eight ticks. So you can see there, so it looks like it does base it off the actual entry price because you can see here we're long for 52.67.
I set an eight tick profit target, an eight tick stop loss, and notice now these prices adjust based on the parameters of the ticks. So you can see our take profit is 52.69. That's approximately eight ticks from 52.67, and our stop loss is 52.65, which is approximately eight ticks from 52.67. So it's based off the last, uh, the entry price, not the last trade price. But the one thing that I want, the, the the point that I wanted to make just a moment ago that I was about to make, that's very important is. Let's say that you decide to do this an hour after you got into the trade. The market may not be trading around the levels where you entered. It might be 10, 15, 20 points away from where you entered, right? So that's where using specific price might come a little more handy because now you know, because if you're a trader, you should know that only certain order types can go on certain sides of the market. So right now the market's trading at 52.66 and a quarter. You can place a buy stop above 52.66 even for example, or you can place a sell limit above 52.66 and a quarter, but you cannot place uh, at this moment where the market's trading at, you cannot place, let's say a sell limit below 52.66 and a quarter. You cannot place a buy limit above 52.66 and a quarter. So if you were to use the tick parameters and it's basing it off the entry price, but the market's already moved 15 to 20 points, then it's not going to work. In fact, um, let's just try something real quick. I am curious if TradingView will automatically detect when you're using an incorrect parameter. Um, I just want to see something real quick. I'm going to actually set something here. So let's say our take profit, if we were to place a sell limit and the market's trading at 52.65.75, then it would be impossible to place a sell limit at 52.63 even. So let's just see what happens. I'll type in 52.63. And there you go. You see that? So this is nice. TradingView is actually not allowing you to actually make this this error and the reason why i, I find this is this is a good example of me demonstrating this in real time is because if this if the trading blue trading view platform didn't allow you it allowed you to do this you would actually prematurely get yourself out of the position and that's probably one of the worst scenarios because let's say your your market's moving in your favor you're making money on the trade and you just simply want to move your stop up for example like you're, you're almost doing like a manual trail stop for example right but you accidentally input the incorrect sell limit price to get out of your trade or sell stop price in this in this example if we're, if we're, if we're long and you place the sell stop on the wrong side of the market and if the platform allows you to do that then what you're doing is you're just basically getting yourself out at the immediate market price and that's exactly not what you don't want to do because you're essentially prematurely getting yourself out of the trade and you can potentially miss out on you know more profits if that run continues to go in your favor so that's just an example but I like the fact that TradingView doesn't allow you to make that mistake. So you can see there, it's not allowing me to place a sell limit at 52.63 because the market's trading at 52.65 and a half. All right, so now let's actually set the correct parameters. Let's go back to eight. And now once everything's actually correct, you'll see that modify button activate so you can actually click it. So I'm gonna hit modify. And now you can see we have our take profit at 52.69. It looks like we just got stopped out. So the market was actually, so that's a good example there. Remember we were long from 52.67 and I had an eight tick stop loss that I just applied, which would have been a stop at 52.65. So the market was trading right at those levels and it immediately got me out. So the reason why I was able to get uh, able to place the trade because at that point in time when I applied the bracket order, our levels were still valid, but the market was basically trading at those levels where the stop price was placed at. In fact, let's go to order history here and let's look at the stop loss. There it is right there. So you can see, 52.65. So that's the order that we just placed. All right. So that's a good example as well. That I'm actually happy that happened because this is important when you're doing it in this manner that we're demonstrating, placing an OCO bracket after the fact that you get into the position, you have to be very mindful of where the market's trading at in correspondent to the parameters that you're setting for the OCO bracket order. So just recap, if you want to be able to apply an OCO bracket order post entry after the fact that you enter the trade, there's two ways of doing it. I'm going to go ahead and just close out the trade. Or we're already out of the trade. Let's get into a short position here. We have a short position. There's no profit target, no stop loss, as you can see there. Now I can hover over the chart. I can simply, this is a short position now. So I'm going to drag below the entry. That's the take profit. There's my stop loss. Drag above it. Now I have a take profit and a stop loss. Now let's go and cancel this out. So again, we don't have a take profit. We don't have a stop loss. I can go here, I can click this modification button, also known as protect position, and I can click take profit and stop loss, and now I can set the parameters based on whatever I want for the take profit stop loss, either based on ticks, specific price, dollar value, 
or percentage. If it's a valid, if the parameters are valid, your modify button will be active. Now I can hit modify, and now you can see my take profit and stop loss is back in place. And this is how you apply an OCL bracket order to a naked position post entry using TradingView. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us at www.ampfutures.com. We have 24-hour support, live chat, and direct phone support. As long as the markets are open, we're open to support you. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, and happy trading.